Samantha Tavender. I graduated with a Bachelor's Degree of Occupational Therapy from Sheffield Hallam University in 2011. Since graduation, I've always worked in mental health services. I've worked in non-traditional settings, in charitable organisations, and I've also worked for the NHS. In December 2014, I was a Band 6 care coordinator in a community mental health team when I saw an advert for the Elizabeth Casson Trust Scholarship. I'd like to take the time today just to quickly talk to you about that experience and the scholarship. Thank you. The Elizabeth Casson Trust was established with the aim of continuing the development of occupational therapy. For those of you who don't know, here's a quick history guide. Elizabeth Casson was born on the 14th of April 1881. In 1919 she was the first woman to be awarded a medical degree from Bristol University. In 1922 she went on to achieve her diploma in psychological medicine. Whilst working in this field she recognised that occupation was an integral part of treatment. Later, in, 1920s, in the 1920s, Dr. Casson travelled to the United States of America and visited an OT department in New York City and the Boston School of Occupational Therapy in Massachusetts. It was then that the idea for an English OT school first took seed in her mind. By 1929, Dorset House School of Occupational Therapy was established in Bristol. This was the first of its kind in England. Dorset House was also a residential clinic for women with poor mental health and service users were provided with the opportunity to engage in occupations and meaningful activity. Dr Casson was awarded an OBE for her work and elected as a Fellow of the World Federation of Occupational Therapists. The College of Occupational Therapy holds a memorial lecture in her name and her legacy continues to live on through the work of the Elizabeth Casson Trust. Today, the Trust continues its aim of furthering occupational therapy treatment and education by funding several different CPT opportunities for OTs. You can read more about these opportunities on the Trust's website. It's hard for me to truly explain or describe the experience that I had when completing my master's degree and frankly it would take me far too long to try and cram it all into a short video. So I'm just going to highlight my top three favourite classes. In no particular order, my number one moment was my outcome measurement class. This class highlighted to me the importance of both evidence-based practice but also service delivery and management. As the NHS changes, occupational therapists are going to be placed with the challenge and the task of being able to demonstrate the effectiveness of occupational therapy and the effectiveness that it has and benefits that it also has for service users and patients. One way of being able to meet this goal and challenge will be through using outcome measurement. Outcome measurement can be used to measure a group, intervention or a service as a whole. For this class I had the opportunity to run mock data on one of my previous groups that I ran. I hope to be able to use this skill going forward in my career. I think it's really important that we're continually developing and assessing our effectiveness of our interventions, groups and, the, and services which we are working with. As I continue as well within my career, I hope that this learning from this module will be use, useful in order for me to take on more leadership responsibilities. Going forward, my plan is to be able to articulate this learning to managers and stakeholders and consider ways of being able to incorporate this into my practice. Number two was having my very own Elle Woods moment when I got to attend Harvard. I was able to attend Harvard Medical School for my interdisciplinary ageing lectures. For this course we had the opportunity to interact with students from different universities, professors and service users from the community. We discussed the experience of ageing, law, ethics and healthcare systems, both private and universal healthcare systems and how this impacts on adults as they age. The course was a great opportunity to consider the wider aspects of ageing through different professionals' lenses, but also to be able to learn more about my own professional values and how I can advocate for myself as an occupational therapy, working with service users as they age, and the importance of occupational therapy working with old adults. Number three was my practicum. 
Rather than having to complete the dreaded thesis, I was able to complete a practicum. For my practicum, I had the opportunity to spend time at a partial day hospital for individuals with severe and enduring mental illness who were living in the community. I developed and implemented a 10-week group programme for individuals with psychosis, particularly looking at the management of voice, of hearing voices and the impact that that has on functioning and activities of daily living. Having the opportunity to engage in and be part of a different healthcare system was a wonderful experience. Firstly, I became so proud, and I always have been, of our National Health Service. It's not without its flaws, but as a country we are incredibly lucky to have such a system in place. Seeing firsthand the impact that a privatised healthcare system can have on individuals who simply cannot afford health insurance is eye-opening. On the other hand, it has also showed me the benefits of such a system. How occupational therapists working within this system have to demonstrate their worth, how they engage within research and evidence-based practice in order to convince stakeholders and service users that occupational therapy will benefit them, will be cost-effective and will impact greatly on an individual's functioning and ability to engage in occupations. Finally, I wanted to share with you some of my top tips. I think there are many things that supported me in being successful in obtaining the scholarship and completing my master's degree. Firstly, reflection. Engage in it. During my bachelor's, I dreaded the reflection essays. The process to me sometimes se seemed a bit tedious, but actually it's really important. Without reflection, we are not only doing our service users a disservice, but ourselves as practitioners. Reflection allows us to take the time to take a step back. Think about what can I do better and how can I do this differently? What did I miss during that interaction? What else could I have said? What else could I have done? Is this the best evidence base that I'm using right now? On a personal level, it has also allowed me to think about what I really want from my career and consider my own personal goals. Secondly, network. The OT world is actually an incredibly small one and it's highly likely that if you attend a conference or a CPD opportunity, you're going to run into somebody whose work you've read or somebody that inspires you or has the same interests and goals as you. It's really important that you utilize these opportunities to spend time with others and reflect with them and think about what it is that you want from your career and where that could possibly take you and how these connections could help you with that. Take advantage of learning opportunities and CPD events as they arrive. One of the reasons why I feel like I have been successful in gaining my scholarship was that I took advantage of these opportunities as they arose. I looked out for them. I engaged in as many free events as I could. Um, if something was happening within my trust that I was working with, I would volunteer for it. Obviously, it's about having a work-life work -life balance and, you know, don't go overboard. But if you have the opportunity to learn something new or engage in an event, then do it. Reflect on it and don't do it for the sake of it. Do it because you want to learn or you want to further your career. Supervision is the number one thing. Supervision is so important. Make sure that you're utilising supervision. Make sure that you're getting it advocate for supervision. One of the things that I didn't realise before I attended Tufts was actually working as a band six in a generic post and not feeling very much like an OT sometimes. I was a little bit stressed and I potentially maybe burnt out and I didn't take the time or utilise my supervision effectively enough to be able to recognise that and to take the step back Completing my degree provided me with the wonderful opportunity for a career break. It refreshed me, it refocused me, but not everybody's going to have that opportunity. So it's really important that you take the time to utilise supervision and reflect on how you're feeling and your work-life balance. Be your own OT. Are you balanced within your occupations? Are you just working all the time? When was the last time you engaged in one of your favourite hobbies? When was the last time you took some time to rest or relax? When was the last time you looked after yourself? 
again, be your own tea, set your own goals. Are they smart? You know, I feel like when we were learning smart goals at university for the first time, I was banging my head against a brick wall, trying to get them the right way. And I found it really difficult. But as soon as you're in practice, it becomes like a second nature. It's what we do all the time. Goal setting is part of our bread and butter. We're really good at it. So utilize that for your advantage. What do you want from your career? Do you want to be a lecturer? Do you want to engage in research? Do you want to stay at a band five? Do you enjoy that contact that you have with patients and you don't want to miss that as you progress throughout the NHS bands? Or do you want to take on a leadership role? Would you like to inspire others? Would you like to help teach other OTs? Would you like to help teach OT assistants? Whatever it is that you want to do, set goals for yourself so that you can achieve that. Map out a career timeline. Because when we're working every day, it passes us by really quickly. And before you know it, it's been five years and you haven't moved on or you haven't changed or developed. And that's why, again, reflection is so important because reflection can show you these things. And finally, promote OT wherever you are, whatever you're doing. One of the things I learned from being around occupational therapists who are often independent practitioners because they're working in a healthcare system that is privatized, such as the United States, is that they really have to advocate for themselves as professionals and their skills and their knowledge and what they can bring and how they can benefit service users. And one way that people are doing that right now is utilizing social media. I didn't really see that as part of my role before, but now as I consider and reflect on my practice, maybe that's something that I should be taking a part of too. So I am on Twitter, I'm not quite sure what I'm doing, but I'm getting there and I think it's really important that we, you know, spread the word and spread our knowledge and, you know, articles that you see on Facebook, share them with your friends, share them with your family. It's it's great as many people who can know about us and know what OTs do as much as possible, the more the merrier. You know, I've also managed to harp on about occupational therapy so much that I've convinced two of my friends to go back to university and they are now studying themselves to be occupational therapists. So... It's a wonderful thing, you know, we have such great knowledge and it's such a unique profession. I, I think it would be a shame to keep that a secret, so why not share it, you know, and why not connect with others? Like I said earlier, networking is, you know, a really huge part of occupational therapy in America at the moment. You only have to look at Twitter and look at Bill Wong and the amazing job that he's doing right now and the contacts that he's made and the opportunities he's created for himself through utilizing social media. So definitely get on board with that and, you know, promote OT and try and get as many people knowing about us and what we do as much as possible. It's been really nice um, doing this video. You can probably tell that it's taken me a while since the time has changed and it was a lot brighter earlier and now it's dark. Um, I'm sorry that it's not going to be as perfect as I'd like to be. I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. I will reflect on that later. Um, but thank you for listening to me and if there's any questions, let me know. Take care. Bye.